What's up, Spice Droppers? It's Charlie from Ferndale. Great day in the morning to make some biscuits. All right, these are super easy and super quick. The only prep work we need to do is throw a stick of butter in the freezer the night before, or at least an hour or two before you start making this. So the first thing we're gonna do is take two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now, you don't want to just take the cup and put it in the flour because that'll push down the flour and kind of mat it down, and that'll ruin the flakiness of the biscuits. So we're gonna just spoon out two and a half cups of the flour into here. And it's okay if a little bit gets on the table because we're gonna be using that later anyway. And then once you go a little over, just kind of move that around here and scoop that back into your flour. So two and a half cups. Now that we got the flour in there, I'm adding two teaspoons of baking powder. If you're using self-rising flour, you don't need to add this baking powder. Now I have one teaspoon of salt and I have a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and that's going to react with the buttermilk when we are cooking this. Now I'm just going to whisk this together so that everything is nice and mixed up. Now once that's nice and mixed, we're going to take some parchment paper and lay that down. Take a cheese grater here and we're going to go on the largest shred grate. And we have our frozen stick of butter here. So I'm just going to take this paper and give myself a handle. And we're going to grate down almost this entire stick. So I'm gonna save this little bit here, about a tablespoon, maybe a little less, and we're gonna use that to melt down and brush over the top of the biscuits when they're done. Now we take this butter, and we're gonna throw that into this mixture, get this whisk out of here, just kinda lightly toss that around. It's nice and cold. There's a little bit inside the cheese grater, so I'm gonna get that out of there. And this saves a lot of time with the mixing, because if you didn't do this, you'd have to go through it with your fingers and kinda twist and pull that butter, but with these frozen little shreds, it's gonna give us exactly what we're looking for in the consistency. So now I'm just gonna take a wooden spoon here. We don't wanna mess with the shape or the form of that butter, so we're just gonna lightly mix this together until we get kind of like a floury, crumbly mixture here. We want it to just basically coat all the butter with flour, but keep all those pieces of butter separated. So now that we're there, we're gonna make a little pool in the middle here, and we're gonna throw in one cup of buttermilk, okay? And then again, if we just mix this all together, willy-nilly, it would mess with the flakiness and the layers of those biscuits. So we're just gonna kinda stir this lightly in, Again, just kind of making sure you, you eventually want to coat everything with the buttermilk. We're going to be looking for like a solid mass that can kind of crumble and flake apart very easily. All right, so you see now we kind of have a crumbly mixture. It's starting to clump up a little bit in spots, which means that it's ready to be shaped and formed. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of more flour out here along with the stuff I already spilled. And then we're gonna dump this out right on here. And you see how it's all kind of solid, but not all completely together. So now I'm gonna take this and we're gonna make a rectangle out of it, pushing it together, but not forcing it to stick together or anything. Now I'm taking my rolling pin, put a little flour on here, and then we're just gonna roll this out till it's about eight by 10, maybe 11 by nine. So now, I like to use a pastry blade for this, but we're gonna take the ends and fold it over like a letter. And if it's crummy on this first step, just take those crumbs and put them on top. Take this end, flip that back. So now we're gonna take this and rotate it. And again, some of these crumbs are falling off, so we'll just put those right back on top. And now we're gonna again, take the rolling pin and roll it out. And each time we do this, it's gonna come together just a little bit more. Again, and you can see it's already more together than it was that first time. So again, take that side, flip it over unto itself. So we've flipped it and rotated twice now, and we're gonna do that a total of five times. And you can see how much more intact this is, all one piece now. So now that we've done that five times, we're gonna again roll this out. Roughly the same size and shape, that rectangle, but we just want to make sure that this is about a half inch thick. If you start getting much taller than half an inch, then they will rise too much and kind of fall over. And if it's too short, then they won't look like fluffy, flaky biscuits. Now that our dough is a half inch thick, I'm going to go ahead and take a baking pan, baking dish, whatever, 
Just spray it. You can also use a cast iron skillet for this. But we're just gonna have this ready to put the biscuits on. Now, right before I started making these, I realized I do not have a biscuit cutter. Biscuit cutter is nice because it has a really sharp edge, so it will go right into that dough and it will not hinder it from rising. Because I'm gonna use this glass here, but because it's that thicker edge, it's gonna kind of pull down on that dough and it might affect the rising of the biscuits. But what you do want to do, whatever you're using, you can also use a tin can if you want. But this is the closest size that I could find to what I need. But we want to dip that in the flour so that it doesn't stick to the dough. And then we're going to go ahead. I should be able to make about 12 of these with this dough. And anytime you feel it kind of sticking, I'm just throwing it back in that flour there. Kind of coat that rim. So we have eight here. We're gonna take this dough away and we can fold that back onto itself kinda as much as possible to make a few more biscuits. And I'm gonna take these ones and we're gonna put them on this tray. And when we put them on this tray, we wanna keep them centered and we wanna keep them touching because they're gonna help each other rise as well. They're gonna kinda hold each other up, if you will. So I got these biscuits on here ready to go. Again, we got the oven at 425. We're gonna put them in there for 15 minutes. And right when you get close to the end, we're gonna take the rest of that butter we had and remember, melt that down so we can brush that over the top of these. All right, spice droppers. I did leave them in there for a couple extra minutes so they'd get a little browner on top, but these came out really good. You can tell which ones were that kind of second batch after I folded it again, because they did not rise near as much. But now I'm gonna brush these all with some butter. Oh man, these smell good. So easy to make, fun to make. If you have kids involved, folding it over and everything is a lot of fun. And now what I like to do too, is take some salt and sprinkle that over it. Especially if you're having these with dinner. You know, that savory is gonna go so good with some like pork chops and gravy or whatnot. But let's just take one of these. If they're not, they're probably way too hot right now. But you can see all those layers in there. We're gonna open that up and you can see it flaking apart. Oh man, that looks amazing. Just put some butter and some, I got some jelly here, some red raspberry jam I'm putting on here. And stay tuned, cause next week I'll be showing you how to make that delicious sausage gravy to put on top of these too. But there we go. I cannot wait to try this. All right, Spice Droppers. This is some good Southern home cooking right here. So much better than those four box cans, too. Boom, mm, baby, we did it again. Mm. Peace and love. I love you.